Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify the pictures that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture and select it, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears in the ribbon with the Format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you will use to format selected pictures. Note that this Contextual tab only appears if you have an image selected within your document. The buttons available in the Adjust button group allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your document. You can click the Remove Background button to remove the background from a selected picture. If you click this button, you will see the Background Removal Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. Word will then display the area that it will not keep in a purple color. You can use the Mark Areas to Keep or Mark Areas to Remove buttons to change your mouse pointer into a pencil that allows you to draw straight lines that indicate sections of the picture to keep or remove depending on which button you clicked. You can also click the Delete Mark button to remove errant marks that you create. When you're ready to remove the background, click the Keep Changes button. If you wish to cancel the changes, you can click the Discard All Changes button to cancel the process. You can click the Corrections button to select from preset adjustment options shown in the Sharpen and Soften and Brightness and Contrast sections. Note that selecting the Picture Corrections Options command at the bottom of the drop-down will display the Picture Corrections category within the Format Picture Task Pane. We will examine changing the settings within the Format Picture Task Pane in the following sections in this chapter. You can use the Color drop-down button to select one of the many colors to apply to the image. You can also select different color saturation and color tone levels by using this button. You can roll over the More Variations command to select a color from the palette of colors that appears. You can click the Set Transparent Color command, and then click on a color within the image to remove that color from the image and replace it with Transparency. You can click the Picture Color Options command to open the Format Picture Task Pane and then set Advanced Color and Correction options for the selected image. You can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your document. First, set your desired compression settings in this dialog box. If you only want to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures in your document, then check the Apply Only to This Picture checkbox. You can choose to delete cropped areas of pictures by checking that checkbox, and then choose a target output that meets your needs. Then click the OK button to compress the pictures in your document. Note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display, as smaller graphic files tend to load faster. Also, this will only work on pictures, like JPEG or GIF files. You can click the Change Picture button to open the Insert Picture dialog box. You can then select a picture to substitute for the current picture without resetting any formatting or size adjustments that you have already made. The last button in the Adjust section is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset any changes that you have made to a picture. Note that this button contains a drop-down arrow that allows you to reset either the formatting only, meaning you choose the Reset Picture command, or both the formatting and the sizing applied to the image, meaning you select the Reset Picture and Size command by simply choosing the desired option from the drop-down menu of choices. The next group in the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles button group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how the style will affect your selected image directly in your document before you actually click on a style to select it. You can also use the upward and downward facing arrows on the right side of the box to scroll through the available preset options. The More button, shown below the two arrows, will open the selection box fully, allowing you to see all of the available options at once. To add an image border, you can click the Picture Border drop-down button and then click on the color of the border that you want to apply. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border, or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by clicking the Picture Border button's drop-down menu, and then you can roll over the Weight command to choose a different thickness for the line from the choices available. Also, 
You can roll over the dashes command in the drop down menu to select a dashed line style to use versus using the default solid border. You can click the picture effects drop down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories available for use on your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over the category that you want to view in order to display a listing of assorted styles within that category. When you hold your mouse pointer over any style that is shown here, it will be shown as a preview on the selected image within your document. You can click on the style that you would like in order to actually apply it to the picture. If you click the Picture Layout button, you can convert the selected picture into one of the SmartArt graphic styles shown. This allows you to incorporate images into your SmartArt and also add supplemental text. You would simply select the style of SmartArt to apply from the choices shown in the drop-down menu. In the Arrange button group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected image in the document. You can click the Position button to select one of the preset placement options for the selected image. You can click the Wrap Text drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. If you have overlapping images within your document, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order in which the images overlap each other in the stack. You can click the Selection Pane button to toggle the display of the selection pane on or off. The selection pane shows the selectable objects, such as pictures that you've inserted into your document. You can click the Align drop-down button to choose from one of the available alignment options displayed within the drop-down menu of choices. The Group Objects drop-down button is used to group together different objects that are selected within your document. If you have multiple pictures or drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document, you can click the Group Objects button and then choose the Group command to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. To ungroup grouped objects, select the grouped object you want to ungroup, click the Group Objects button again, and then choose the Ungroup command. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected image in your document from the drop-down menu of Rotation Choices. In the Size button group, you will find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button, and then click and drag inward on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic to mark those sections of the image as the parts that will be removed. You can then click the Crop button again to crop the selected parts of the image away. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by clicking the Crop button again, and then clicking and dragging the cropping handles back outwards to restore parts of the image that were lost. You can then click the Crop button again. You can also click the Reset Picture button that appears in the Adjust button group to reset the picture back to its original state if needed. You can crop an image to fit a selected shape, or you can choose to crop an image to fit a selected dimension ratio like portrait or landscape. To crop an image to fit a selected shape, click the drop-down button under the Crop button, and then roll over the Crop to Shape command. You can then click on a desired shape from the side menu of choices that appears. To crop a picture to a selected aspect ratio, click the drop-down button under the Crop button, and then roll over the Aspect Ratio command. You can then select one of the aspect ratios from the side menu that appears. You can also use the spinner arrows that appear at the right end of either the Shape Height or Shape Width spinner boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. To make more specific changes to the image size, you can use the Advanced Layout Size dialog box. To open this dialog box, click the Advanced Layout Size dialog box launcher button in the lower right corner of the Size button group. On the Size tab of the Layout dialog box, you can enter the height and width into the text boxes provided. To adjust the relational aspect, meaning the height to width ratio of the selected image, ensure that the Lock Aspect Ratio checkbox is deselected in the Scale section first. Then enter the height and the width independently. You can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the Rotation Spinner button. In the Scale section, you can enter a percentage into either the Height and or the Width text boxes to scale the image by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the two available checkboxes in this section as needed when making your size and scale change. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio 
and determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. You can also click the Reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any changes made to the size of the image. After making your adjustments, click the OK button to close the Size dialog box and apply your changes. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.